Hello and welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I am your host, Marla Martinson, and I have a fascinating subject and a fascinating guest today. Dina Miriam's Journey Through Time is a spiritual memoir that sheds light on the workings of karma, the law of cause and effect that creates one's present circumstances and relationships as we see it unfold through Dina's vivid memories of her previous births. We travel back in time as Dina learns of a life in early 20th century Russia, ranging from the overthrow of the Tsar through Nazi Germany, then it's back further to a life in early 19th century America in the Deep South, and before that, to a time in Africa in the early 18th century. Her lives in the East, in Persia, Japan, and India go way back to the 15th and 17th centuries. With each past life, we can see the way in which it has impacted her present life and how it stemmed from the end of the previous birth and how it will influence her next life. Dina Merriam is the founder of an interfaith organization, the Global Peace Initiative of Women, a longtime disciplined mediator. Dina's access to her past lives brings a clearer awareness and purpose to her present life and also over overcomes any fear of death. How fascinating is this, you guys? Welcome, Dina. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, my gosh. I'm I'm reading your book, and I'm more than halfway through. It's it's. You know, it's a, a big book. It's just packed with amazing stories, and I just can't wait to get back to them every night when I, you know, relax for the <laughs> evening and, and read. And so just, I mean, this is, you've had access to your past lives, I mean, in great detail. So so uh, tell us a little bit about how this happened. <laughs> well, you know, since I was a child, and I think most children... Um, carry with them memories, um, but often they're subtle, and you know if you're not attentive, you wouldn't think much about it. Right. So I, I did have these memories as a child. Um, uh, in my in my dreams, I used to dance ballet. I wasn't really trained in this life, but I would find myself dancing in my dreams, which was a carryover from my previous birth. Um, and then when I when I found my guru when I was uh, 20 years old, read his book Autobiography of a Yogi, recognized it as my guru, Yogananda, um, I began to meditate and I developed a very serious meditation practice. And as I as the years went on, these memories began to awaken. And there was a point after I'd been meditating for 20 some, about 20 years, where uh, circumstances in my life were arranged in such a way someone stepped into my life and suddenly, boom, it's like the door opened and these memories just flooded in. And it was quite intense. <laughs> I have to say, when, I, when, when they were first beginning to happen to me, um, I, I, didn't, I had to really ground myself and say, um, you know, I'm a sane, grounded person, single mom, raising two kids, holding a job. Yeah. You know, I'm, I've now gone off in the deep end, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I I'm, I'm, you know, hadn't taken acid or anything. I, I wasn't into <laughs> drugs. <laughs> so, you know, I had to really um, trust where this was all leading me. And as I began to see more and more, it all fell into place and it made perfect sense. And, and um, I, I did, you know, kind of check myself continually to make sure that I was, that I, what I was seeing was valid. Now, when you were seeing these uh, visions into your past lives, which were triggered by maybe somebody you'd meet or worked with, and and were were you seeing this whole thing play out in during meditation, or there were clips of it as you were just wandering around in life? Or <laughs> most often, it would be during meditation, and I actually ended up keeping a um, a pen and pencil by my meditation seat yeah. because I I would just see things and hear conversations, and I'd be, like, I'd be kind of pulled through a tunnel back into time, and I found myself in another scene, in another place. It was like being in a movie. Right. And I had to just go with it. There was nothing I could do. But there were times um, where, you know, at that time I was working with my father in his business uh, as a writer. There would be times I'd be sitting in a meeting, and suddenly I'd, I'd be back in Nazi Germany. And, yeah, I'd totally blank out what was going on around me, and I'd just be feeling the anxiety of being back in Germany at that time. And, it, you know, 20 minutes would pass before I could pull myself back to the present. And there were times when, you know, people would turn to me and say, what do you think about that, Dina? And I would just look at them and say, 
Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> So you were just zoned out. You were just sitting there, just maybe just staring and zoned out while you were reliving. Yeah. Well, I was able to, you know, keep myself functioning superficially. Yeah. Mentally, I was gone. And um, and it's just, fascinating because th there's every detail in these stories. I mean, the the conversations, the the whole scene, just like a a book. I mean, just like a memoir. And so when you'd see things, did you go back in? to relive it again, to, to make those notes? Oh, yes. I, I actually did re relive those things again. And, you know, everything is stored, you know, in, in mystical traditions, they say that everything is stored in the ether, in the Akashic, in the Akashic, it was called the Akashic Records, the database, right? Cosmic database. Every thought, every action yeah. of every li living being yeah. um, is retained. Mm -hmm. uh, another way of looking at it is that it's stored in our in our in our consciousness, okay. um, at, at a place that we don't access. So one can access all these things, right. and um, I, I know that there are many other people who've had ex like ex these experiences, maybe not able to sequence them the way I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I really was able to sequence seven lives so I could see the patterns. Because my real interest, to me, it was not a matter of this running coronation wheel, because I never had any doubt about that since yeah. childhood. Yeah. To me, my interest was understanding the law of cause and effect. Because if you understand how that works, you, 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 you can realize that you are shaping your future, and you can more consciously mm -hmm. shape your future. Yeah, and it's interesting how, um, so the last chapter that I just read was when you were in uh, India, and, and Mary, had to marry the the Muslim uh, royal family, and then you became a mediator between talks, religious talks, and, and all that, and that's what you do now in this life. That's what I do now, yeah. There, there are two themes that emerge through these lives that have defined my life today, and that is this interfaith, this, this trying to mediate between different, I mean, also in Japan, there's a life you haven't come to yet in Japan, yeah. where I try to mediate between different clans. But the other theme is the, the theme of, of my, as, as a woman trying to find my own voice mm -hmm. and trying to um, uh, 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 see the potential of women spiritually. And that's the kind of the core of the work that, I, that I've been doing for the last 20 years is, is trying to bring out, to highlight, and to emphasize the importance of women's voices now, especially women in the spiritual communities. Interesting that in all these, so far in all these stories, you're a woman. Are you a man yes. in any of them that you? I I I have um I have two recollections of being a man, but I ha don't have any um, details of those lives. I have just a snapshot. Okay. And so I didn't include them. One was a Native American, uh -huh. and one is a, a man in a Sadhu in India. But I have, I have no there's there's no narrative that I have, and so it didn't seem relevant to to this story. Right. Now, how many, do you have any idea how many past lives you have had, personally? I imagine it's hundreds. So hundreds, I feel, yeah. I mean, I'm just finishing a second book, which goes back further in time. When I finished this book, you know, I sat with these memories for a long time and then really wrote it down for my own, uh, to, to, to preserve them for, for myself. Right. And I showed them to a few friends, the, the, the manuscript. And, and one of my friends, the first friend I showed it to, had just been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And she um, was just dabbling with the spiritual path, looking to find, uh, she started TM, started meditation. And the book so affected her and so um, helped her at the end of her life, she subsequently died, that she said to me, Dina, you have to publish it. There are a lot of people like me who will find this so comforting. And so she was one of the ones who encouraged me. But I finished the book and I thought, okay, now, you know, I've nothing more to say. <laughs> And then, um, you know, I travel a lot. And in my travels, and I was in India, um, and I went to a place in India, and then older memories began coming back. And so I've recaptured two lives from an earlier time in India, much earlier, um, B.C., that I've now put together into the second book. Uh, because I think there are themes there that are really important. So what I try to sh show is, what, what is the teaching? What, what do we learn from this? It's not just a matter of curiosity. Who was I? Yeah. A lot of people approach past life as out of curiosity. Right. You know? Sure. And, and I think that that's, that's um, it, it, it's got to be useful to, to us 
to where we are in a spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. You know, so what can we learn about about our tra- trajectory? You know, where we've been and where we're going, and and how could it be useful? What do we learn about society? How we can be helpful to society? So, so to me, it's really about about the learning, about understanding the law of cause and effect, and also, um, I think we're at the point in human history where a change in our relationship with death will come about because this changes everything. Right. Right. It's just that we keep going on and on. And so how has this made you, changed you as far as death? I mean, are you, you're, are, do you feel perfectly fine with it and looking forward to the next incarnation? Well, or do you, I, I'm looking forward because I have things that I haven't completed. Right, right. I don't, Eventually. I don't, <laughs> right. You, you know, I think, I think, um, we have attachments, people yes, that we love and we know. Pets and, that, you know um, things. Not that we won't meet again, but it won't be quite like this. Right. It won't be in this relationship like this. And so that's what holds us, holds us back. Right. But I also know that there are beings there mm-hmm. that I have attachment to. Yeah. That I somehow can connect to at certain moments. Mm-hmm. But I know that when I see them, I'll be happy to be able to be in their presence again. Right. So it's like we have attachments here and we have relationships there. I think that's a really important thing to be mindful of, is that we have relationships in in the um, subtle world, in the world, non-physical world. And those relationships, you know, it's home. It's home too. Right. So, you know, you can look at Earth as being home or you can look at Earth as being a going out. And the place that we return to again and again is our home. And what about um, lives on different planets because earth has not always been here and won't always be here any thoughts on that i think that in our long journey which is probably you know hundreds of thousands of years um we probably take birth and we take we do take birth in many different forms Mm -hmm. many different places but it's all according to our will you know I, i think that we create our destiny we you know, maybe not maybe not our conscious mind, right. but our 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 inner being, whatever you're going to call it, the soul, the self, the inner inner being, um, is directing us along a path that will lead to our uh, our learning and awakening. And if that means going to another planet, yeah. so be it. But but I think many of us have a fondness for Earth, and so we we want to protect and care for our Earth, so we keep coming back. Something interesting for me, I always, uh, often I'll think when I have a a pull to a certain place, so I really do love uh, Indian food, uh, culture, art, um, music, a lot of things I'm pulled there. Iran, I lived there uh, as a teenager, and I have a great pull towards that area. Also, when I go to Europe or go to France, I go in these old churches that are like from the 10th, 11th century, the smell in those churches, I feel like I'm home, I feel that smell, I'm like, oh my gosh, so I think, oh, I probably had past lives in these places that I feel so, you know, pulled to. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. I think those are the hints. I mean, I, yeah, we hints. receive so many subtle hints. Yes. And um, it doesn't matter if you don't remember the details. I think the important thing is to is to know that it, that it was and that the future will be that it's an ongoing journey. Right. Um, and I have found what I found in, in the last few years my attention shifting from the past to the future. Mm. As I've begun to realize that all these experiences of the past have created the conditions of today for me in this life. Right. But then I'm creating. I'm putting the the, the um, thoughts out there to create the conditions for, for the future. And what do I want that future to be? What do I want to do? What, what do I want to, you know, what growth do I want to uh, nurture? So that's an interesting Yes, um, like, for process. instance, um, Daniel Brinkley, who had, like, three near-death experiences. He was hit by lightning, and he went through that life review. And he was uh, uh, in the military. He, was, he says, I was a bad dude. You know, I was a real mean guy. And, um, and now he realizes, because of that life review, that he try, he's as nice as he can, he does good deeds now, he hugs everybody, he's just putting out love, 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 because he wants to switch that life review for next time, you know, not to have, see all of that, because he sees the ripple effect and, and what happens karmically and all that, so. 
very interesting. Well, that's a blessing. And people who've had the life, near, uh, the death experience, it's a blessing because most of them come back changed. Right. Um, you know, they, they, they realize, I mean, you, you know, we, we um, in our younger years, we don't, we live so unconsciously, you know, we're not, we're not mm-hmm. conscious of our, what we're thinking and, and, and behavior, how we behave to other people. But then at a certain point, you go, wow, <laughs> you know, um, there is this law of cause and effect, which operates throughout the universe. Right. And you know, it's complex, and it's not a simple thing, if I do this and you'll do that to me. It's very complex. And, and what I've learned is that it's multiple lives together that shape who you are. It's not just the previous birth. It's, it's, a, it's a, an incredibly, I mean, it just fills you with awe when you think how this universe operates with all the things that work together to create the moment. You know, um, so many causes and so many conditions coming together. And the, and the, so many spiritual teachers or people who've had near-death experiences and psychics, they'll say the time, everything's happening at once. So, so all of your lives that you're recalling are supposedly happening at once, but we see it on this timeline. So that's hard well, to Well, that's, that's an interesting... I, I, I had that... I, I had that experience at a certain point when I was reliving all this, where I would, I would, and even now, I, I still haven't finished my previous birth, I still find myself back there at times, I, and it's like time, time just becomes very flexible, mm-hmm. um, and, and I find myself in the future also, in, in beginning to envision the, the next birth, um, so time at a certain point just evaporated for me, and the same thing with Space. This is the last chapter in the book talks about the the um, the after you leave your body, that state, whatever you're going to call it, the post life okay. state yeah. between lines, the world between lines, and and I find myself being present there sometimes during the day in conversation with one of the the beings who's very close to me there, and it's this time, space also doesn't exist. Time, time is a, is a is a creation of the mind and so is space. Mm-hmm. But as I, I described in the last chapter, a, a, a year down here appears like a day up there. Mm. So it could be a very short time, and you look down, and ten years have passed. You know. Yeah. So so the time the time it's a big time difference. <laughs> it's not like going to Europe where you have only a few hours. You know, it's a it's a um, there's a big gap. And in your book, you d- you talk about a man that you were was working for your father's company that uh, you recognized as someone from your a past life. And that was a very interesting one when you, in the deep south, and uh, that story. Yeah, yeah there was a, the, um, a man who came to the company who began talking, he actually began talking to me in Russian. He was from the... Right, was, yes. Oh, Russian. no, that was the Russian. Yeah, yeah that's right. out of the blue, he started speaking to me in Russian. Yes. And, and started calling me an affectionate, affectionate Russian name. Yeah. And, um, and I loved to hear him talk in Russian. I, I didn't understand a word of Russian. Yeah. Um, but then things happened, that, and that, this is what kind of led to the, 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 the recall, the memories coming up. Mm-hmm. And as soon as the, the full spec- life had come back to me, he left the company. It's like his work had been done. But there was, there was a confusing moment because he was, saying he was divorced, I was divorced, and we had had a relationship in the, my previous birth, not married, but we had a relationship. And so I thought, oh, you know, now this is man going to come into my, you know, we're going to be in a relationship. And so there was a confusing moment, which is why, I, there are many reasons why people caution uh, you against doing past life recall, because it's going to be confusing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You meet people that you had relationships with, and you, you can not know what the correct relationship is in this life. But he left the company, yeah. and I didn't see him for a long time after that. And I realized that it wouldn't be at all appropriate for us to be in a relationship. We were in, you know, in different worlds. Right. So, um, you know, it's interesting. And then you see you see how much you've moved on, you know, uh, since that time. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like you meet a high school boyfriend, mm-hmm. you know, 50 years later. Right. <laughs> and you say, what was I thinking? Who was I that I could be attracted to that man, you know? And that's happening um, a lot with social media. And then a lot of people are getting together with their high school uh, sweethearts now after their divorce, or they lose their husband too. They're they're getting together with them. It's that happens too. Right, right, both ways. But I look back yeah. at 
probably all of my past relationships. Um, I'm married now for 17 years, but most of them I think to myself, what were you thinking? <laughs> uh, me too. I, so so interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what do you say, now this book, whether, I mean, what do you, are there people that are saying, come on, this, you know, hardcore skeptics, or how is this being received, this message in general? You know, it's been received really well. Before I published the book, a few friends of mine, friends in the spiritual community, um, ca uh, cautioned me and told me to use a, a, a pseudonym. I said, D don't, don't use your name, Dina. And I, and I said, if I'm going to, if I'm going to publish the book, What's the point? My, it's my whole life. Right. <laughs> <about> my life. <laughs> um, and they said, you know, you, you've got your family, your, your family could be embarrassed by this, and etc. Actually, my family doesn't know about the book. I come from a very, you know, a business family, very secular minded. Um, they know of my interest, they know of my work with the Global Peace Initiative Movement. They never ask any questions, uh, they, they, uh, don't, don't, they don't acquire. And so I, I don't. I don't press my experiences on people if they don't require. But I've been doing a lot of interviews and shows, and, and the response has been much better than I thought, actually. Mm -hmm. I read about your children, your, your kids. My kids, um, my kids don't know about the book. One, my oldest, I have two sons. My oldest son knows about the book. My youngest son doesn't know anything. Oh, that's so interesting. Them. Here you're writing this amazing, huge manuscript and getting it published and going on shows, and they just you just kept it quiet. That's very easy. I kept it quiet. My friends all know. My friends have all read it. Um, and and I've had a lot of interesting questions on, on these shows, mm -hmm. uh, people from Christian backgrounds uh, who say, you know, uh, I, I had this experience, could it have been a past life recall? I know I was so-and-so, I know it was this or that. And so I think that is that, and I, I, a Pew poll a few years ago showed that 25% of American Christians accept reincarnation. Mm -hmm. It's probably great now, greater right. today. Yeah. So, uh, and then friends have been sending me books with all this academic research, and, and for me it's not a matter of is it true or not true. I mean, it's just, it's just a given. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to me it's just a matter of, as I said before, of, of what benefit does it bring, right. you know? Um, I think that it does change your world view, right. uh, you know, for sure, if you know that it's not just one life and you're going to be judged, you know, eternally, yeah. one way or the other. Yes. yes. And also if you know that, that you're the creator of your destiny. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's, that's, that's deeply empowering. Of course, it gives you responsibility, which many people may, may not want to take. But um, to know that, that you, can, you can shape your life. And, and I kind of, I think it's very comforting to know that even if maybe this life you kind of screwed up, maybe you, somebody got hooked on drugs or ended up in jail or just didn't feel they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. And, and, and uh, just to know that it's not like this was your only shot. You know, there's going to be so much more happening and exciting and that lifetimes to come. And um, even if we can't remember it all, you know, like you do. Exactly. I think to know that everybody has had such a variety of experiences. Everybody has been rich, poor, mm -hmm. you know, this religion, that religion, this culture, that, this color of skin, that color of skin. I mean, if people really took that in and recognized that, it, it would just get rid of, of, of prejudice. Yes, I, I, it's still so puzzling how we are, there's still people who are racist or, or judge other people for what skin color they were born or area or background. It's, it's just the human, a soul incarnating into a body that, you know, we, the, that person didn't have control over. And, and we've had many lifetimes, like you said, in different types of bodies and areas of, of the world. And so it's, it is very uh, disheartening, but hopefully things will change and stories like this can definitely help and open minds. It's, it's given me, I mean, when I, when I, so I try to figure out, I mean, of course, one can't see another person's history, uh, at least I don't have that gift, but, you know, people who are very racist now, this is coming up again in our society, this nationalism, so what, what is it about, what is it about their past, you know, where were they in their last birth right. that, that brought them to this situation? I mean, you know, all the, the Nazis that lived in Germany, they've been reborn somewhere, where, they, where have they been reborn? Yeah. You know, 
So, so people carry with them something of their past, and, and until they can free themselves, these things will keep coming up again and again. So it's like everybody has to do their individual work um, because we all carry we all carry our past with us. It doesn't just dissolve, mm -hmm. you know, when you die. So that you know they're, they're and that's why these things you think you think we're free. You know, we thought in this country we were finished with that racism mm -hmm. when Obama became president. We're a black president. <laughs> no, it's, I, I I don't know, but uh, well. Dina, I thank you so much for stopping by and talking about this amazing book. I'm looking forward to get reading till the end. And you guys, all of her links are below uh, to buy the book. And you just got to read it. I mean, My Journey Through Time, a spiritual memoir of life, death, and rebirth. And even if you have doubts to think that she could recall all this, it's still a great read. I mean, it's just wonderful s stories and through history and these amazing characters. So... Um, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. And leave a comment below if you recall any past lives. If you've had life, past life regression, what are your experiences? I'm looking forward to reading those comments. And uh, if you like this interview, like it and subscribe to my channel. Much love, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.